Well, uh, hello everyone, this is Pastor Travis, and I'm doing a devotion here on the letters to the churches in the book of Revelations. And so, this is an amazing book. Uh, we're actually talking about the last church today that uh, out of the seven churches. Um, and I uh, want to start in chapter 1 with our opening verse again, which is uh, verse 3. It says, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keeps these things which are written in it, for the time is near. So important to realize that um, we are blessed when we read the words of the book of Revelations because there's so many spiritual principles that are going to help us to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord because the time is near. And so, so far we've covered uh, six of the churches. We've talked about the loveless church, which was uh, the church of Ephesus. We talked about the persecuted church, which was the church in Smyrna. Uh, we also talked about uh, the church, the compromising church, the church of Pergamos, the corrupt church, which is the church in Thyatira. Uh, we talked about the dead church, uh, the faithful church, and the lukewarm church. And we also talked about the dispensation. So these were historic churches uh, that were in existence when Jesus spoke to John here in the book of Revelation in the first century, but they were historical churches. But there's also a dispensational interpretation. So though they were historic and they had their issues that had to be addressed, it's also representing different time periods from the first century up until the end. Now, the last two churches we're dealing with here, the faithful church, which is uh, to the pastor of the church of Philadelphia, and also the lukewarm church, which we're talking about today, the dispensational time period is actually the time we're living in, I believe, right now. This is a dispensational time uh, of the church worldwide before the coming, just pre-tribulation, just before the rapture. This is what's happening. There's going to be the faithful church, which we spoke of last week or two weeks ago, and the lukewarm church. And we have to choose which church uh, we want to be. And so I want to start here in verse 14, chapter 3, the lukewarm church. And to the angel of the church of Laodicea, right so jesus is speaking to the church of the laodiceans he's speaking here he says these things says the omen the amen the faithful and true witness so first of all laodicea historically was a church um, that was an arrogant self-sufficient church in an affluent city so the city that they were living in was very wealthy and prosperous it was known for being a banking center uh, for the production of glossy black wool used in clothing and carpet and they held the market on this okay and they were also known for producing a medical salve for curing eye disorders so they were so their industry was wool number one their second industry was medical industry and they produced an eye salve that was wanted worldwide the envy of the they were the envy of the ancient world they were so prof they were so prosperous that I believe it was the year AD 60, there was an earthquake that destroyed their city, uh, the Laodicean city, it was destroyed, uh, and they refused financial help from Rome because they had so much money they wanted to rebuild themselves, okay? So this was a very prosperous uh, city, and it, it's, it's, it was located in what we call modern-day Turkey, okay? So that's the historical layout. Now, Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, look what Jesus says. He says, and... These things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, uh, who was the beginning of the creation of God. Now, as we've been talking, Jesus always identifies with each church with the things they're struggling with. And he says here, he says, I am the faithful and true witness. So obviously he was, he was speaking to the fact that they were being unfaithful in their witness. How were they witnessing the gospel? They were being unfaithful. So Jesus is saying, hey, listen, I'm the true faithful witness. And then he says, I'm the beginning of the creation of God. So these are the, the two areas that they're struggling with. Okay? Uh, so they're unfaithful in their witness. Then he identifies and he says, I'm the beginning of the creation of God. Now, here's the thing. Um, Jehovah Witnesses uh, and other religious groups... Uh, we will say that see this is saying that Jesus was had a created being he's a created being and he was created in the beginning 
That's not what this is saying, okay? This is saying something very different, okay? This is saying that Jesus was the beginning of the creation of God. In other words, if you turn with me to John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, it says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Okay? He existed in the beginning with God, and he created everything through Jesus. Okay? Nothing was created except through Jesus. So this, what this is saying, that Jesus is the beginning of the creation, is like saying that the foreman and the developer of the home uh, is the beginning of the creation of that house. So Jesus is saying, I was there when all the materialistic things that you love and you, um, you're you putting before me, all this material wealth, your BMW, you know, the things that that are created, I am the beginning of all that creation. See, what the, we're going to get into this, but this church is lukewarm because they're, they, they have their focus on material wealth and prosperity. So let's look at what Jesus says to, the, to this church. He says here in uh, verse 5, he says, I know your works that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now, what's he talking about here? Now, Jesus um, really speaks in parables. He's the master of parables or uh, analogies, and he, he really relates to people with pictures. And so what was happening here in, in Laodicea was Laodicea was actually, the geography of Laodicea was uh, that this city, to the north of Laodicea, was a city called Heropolis. Now, Heropolis had healthy hot springs. I think they were about six kilometers away, and they had healthy hot springs. Now, hot springs, we're talking about boiling hot water, which is very medicinal. It's able to help you. You can put herbs in it. You can put tea in it, and uh, it, it's healthy. It's, it's good to drink, okay? It has purpose, okay? And then to the south of Laodicea, we had a city called Colossae. Now, Colossae had cold springs that they were clean and refreshing to drink from. They were healthy to drink from. But because Laodicea, as a wealthy city, didn't have good water supply, they had to have aqueducts that would run from both cities. So they had hot water being piped in from one city. They had cold water being piped in from another city. And I believe Colossae was about 10 kilometers away. Don't quote me on this. The other city was six kilometers away. There was that kind of a distance. And so the water was coming in through an aqueduct system. And by the time it reached Laodicea, it was lukewarm and not good to drink. And if you drink lukewarm water that has traveled, it can pick up bacteria, it's no longer healthy, and it can make you sick, okay? And so Jesus was trying to talk to them about a, an issue that they had in the natural realm, a problem they had in this city that was in their own life, okay? And he says, I will spew you out of my mouth, okay? So many many preach that the hot, that the hot represents passion for God and that the cold is uh, you're completely non-interested in spiritual things. I don't believe it means this. It, it could take that, that tone, but I believe because Jesus is speaking to the church, it's never good to be cold. So I don't think it has to do with that. I believe lukewarm here means that they were so prosperous and they were so self-sufficient that they, com they were completely at a relationship with Jesus. They were like living the life, living the dream, all is well in the world and they had left Jesus outside. They weren't in relationship with Jesus, okay? They were not only participating with the status quo when necessary as a means of survival, they were fully embracing the lifestyle and the values of the elite and the powerful because they were living in a time of prosperity, okay? And I believe the next verse shows us that in Revelations chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. If you got your Bible, this is the New King James Version I'm reading from. Because you say I'm rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. So the church was saying, hey, I'm rich, I'm wealthy, I have no need of anything. And he says, do you not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked? So Jesus was saying, spiritually, you need some work to be done inside of you. You, you got all the wealth, but you're, you're empty on the inside. Look what he says in verse 18. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you may be spiritually rich, 
white garments that you may be spiritually clothed. And I'm adding the word spiritual, okay? And the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And he says, I want to anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Now, remember, the city was known for eye salve in the natural to help people's physical eyes. And he's saying, I want eye salve to help your spiritual eyes because you need to see that you're not all fixed yet. You've got some work to do, okay? Then look at Revelations chapter 3, verse 19. And I love this because, again, Jesus is rebuking these people for forgetting about him. And look what he says. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. He's saying, listen, you're messed up, but I love you. And because I love you, I'm rebuking you. I want you to change and be zealous and repent. Turn 180 degrees. He loved them even in their lukewarmness. You might be lukewarm. You might have all your dependency in your wealth, uh, in your retirement savings funds, in, uh, in different things in this world. And you might not be putting much attention to Jesus. I want to tell you this. He still loves you. Because he loves you, he might be rebuking you today and say, get your priorities straight, okay? Remember, lukewarmness is self-sufficiency and it's neglecting a relationship with God. So let's look on Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. Look what he says. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So he's speaking to the church and he's saying, listen, I'm outside knocking on the door and I want you to hear my voice. I'm trying to talk to you. And I want you to open the door so I can have fellowship and relationship with you. So you see how this is very clear that they were into their wealth and their prosperity and they had moved away from having intimacy with Jesus. And so that's why, um, you know, this, this is where, you know, I believe we're living in. We have to choose in this end time, are we going to live as a lukewarm church or are we going to live as the faithful church? And verse 21 and 22, I want to read here. Jesus says, if you repent, here's a reward. There's always a reward for our obedience. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. I will also uh, overcome as I have also overcome and sat with my father on his throne. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Now, there's a reward for overcoming. And uh, God wants us to be overcomers. We have to have our priorities straight. Now, here's the thing. The dispensational interpretation of this, okay, uh, is that this church represents the church in the final days, just before the rapture of the saints. Hot water is medicinal. Cold water is refreshing. Warm water is useless. And it's not healthy to drink, okay? Now, it's okay to have material wealth. But it's not okay if material wealth has you. I love this passage here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10 to 14. And we're going to close. When you have eaten and are satisfied, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments or his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. Otherwise, when you have eaten and are satisfied and when you've built good houses and lived in them, okay? And when your herds and your flocks multiply, see there's prosperity coming, and your silver and your gold have multiplied, and all that you have multiplies, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. If we can have wealth, okay, and use it for the glory of God, and keep the relationship with God in check as the number one thing. It's from the Lord. All wealth comes from the Lord. It's not wrong to have money. It's wrong for money to have you. And so that's a little soul searching that we need to do uh, as we move on in these times. And what happens now, or sorry, what's happening now with um, this pandemic thing that we're in with the COVID-19? Um, we're seeing that people realize now, are starting to realize that they can't put the kind of security in their you know, real estate properties, in their jobs, uh, in the economy, in their governments, the things that are created 
don't create security. It's Jesus and the voice of God and having fellowship with God that creates security in our lives. And so because all everything's being shaken, people are beginning to look back and say, God, you know, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to put you back because my security is in you, in spiritual riches, not earthly riches. Let me pray with you. Father, we come before you. We thank you that, uh, you know, that you have given us an opportunity to repent if we have put our faith and our passion on earthly things. You want us to have a deeper relationship with you and put our faith and passion in a relationship with you and in hearing your voice and in having fellowship with you. So God, I just ask God right now that if any of us have um, become lukewarm, we, we don't want to be lukewarm. We ask that you'd forgive us. We ask God that you would uh, uh, revitalize us by the Holy Spirit. Your spirit represents water. We want the medicinal benefits of the Holy Spirit, and we want the refreshing of the Holy Spirit, but we're not going to be stagnant because you're not a stagnant spirit. And we thank you for it. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.